After World War I, most Canadian soldiers finally arrived home in the 1920s due to the poor transportation. However, once they got home, they realized that their jobs were taken away when they were gone, and worse, by women. Since a male's social status was still higher than the females in the 1920s, the women were forced to go back to being housewives. Canada was in debt after the war and the economic inflation wasn't helping either. Influenced by the Russian Revolution, many soldiers went on strike on May 15th in Winnipeg. This was later known as the Winnipeg General Strike. Workers wanted higher wages and better working conditions. The almost unanimous response by working men and women closed the city's factories, crippled Winnipeg's retail trade, and stopped trains. Public sector employees, including policemen, firemen, postal workers, telephone operators, and employees of waterworks and other utilities, joined the strike of private industry in an impressive display of solidarity. Women in the 20s were really unhappy about the rights they had. Five women in particular, known as the Famous Five, appealed to the Judicial Committee and it declared that females should be recognized as persons in the late 1920s. Canada's independence, however, flourished greatly after the war. Canada was a country in the League of Nations and took part in the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. And after Mackenzie King was elected as Prime Minister, he signed the Balfour Report in 1926, which requested formal recognition of Britain's Dominion's autonomy, which included Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and South Africa. This made Canada more independent than the country has ever been. In the early 20s, Canada was in an economic depression. However, due to the massive breakthroughs of technology, the economy improved greatly. The decade was known as the Roaring Twenties since many Canadians were making enough money to participate and enjoy the style of life. Radios, television, and automobiles were sold at reasonable prices, and most people could afford it. For example, the Ford T model was popular and it made transportation much more convenient. Americans would drive to Canada in these vehicles and the tourism industry flourished. Before World War I, Canada mainly traded with Great Britain only, but after the war, Britain was greatly in debt and the U.S. emerged as a new economic leader. During the 20s, U.S. investment in Canada increased. Since the two countries are closely together geographically, trading was cheaper and more efficient than it happened with Europe. Metals mined in Canada were exported to the U.S. to build automobiles and radios. Branch plants were set up by Americans in Canada, which were businesses owned and controlled by companies in the U.S. which operated in Canada. This was a good practice since it avoided paying Canadian tariffs. The economy was booming and the quality of life was at its finest. However, all hopes and dreams were crushed when the stock market crashed on October 29, 1929, and the New York Stock Exchange collapsed. This was known as the Wall Street Crash. People who deposited their money into banks rushed to take out their money and many banks went bankrupt. Companies and factories closed down and there was a massive unemployment number. At that moment, the people knew that the 30s were going to be dirty. Hence, they named it the Dirty 30s. I'm not even joking here. Economists knew that the North American economy was in trouble when the price for wheat in the world market began to fall in 1927. North American wheat farmers had depended on foreign markets and their incomes decreased when sales decreased. Overproduction was an issue, but the fact that many European countries owed America money from the war, it made it difficult for them to repay America back since they got their money from Germany whose economy was basically burned to the ground after the Great War. The Depression emphasized how Canada was dependent on its export, and it could be a rather risky business to only rely on. The dependence on exports such as wheats from the prairies and news printing from British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec made Canada very vulnerable to changes in the world market. Since America was Canada's biggest trading partner and largest investor, the American stock market crashing is bound to affect Canada as well. Mackenzie King didn't deal with the depression with much effort. He said he wouldn't contribute a five-cent piece in a speech.
This caused him the 1930 election, and R.B. Bennett of the Conservative Party won. People who were once rich were seen living on the streets, homeless and hungry. The federal government set up relief camps for unemployed and homeless Canadian males. The camps involved hard labor and still very little money was earned, about 20 cents a day. Bennett's solution to the Depression was to use tariffs to blast a way through. The enormous increase in tariffs were there to protect Canadian industries. It was effective for some Canadian businesses, but this method was more harmful since the rest of the world thought it was too expensive to trade with Canada, so the worldwide trade decreased. There were many protests in the country throughout the 30s, and people were very upset about Bennett, and so the people voted Mackenzie King back into power in 1935. European nations were not doing well either. People were desperate to get out of the Great Depression, and so elected extremists as their leaders, mostly dictators such as Joseph Stalin of Soviet Russia, Benito Mussolini of Fascist Italy, and most importantly, Adolf Hitler of Nazi Germany. Tension was building in Europe when Hitler came to power, and Germany started to rearm the Rhineland even though it was against the war guilt clause that Germany was supposed to follow. Canada was reluctant in joining another world war since Hitler's action didn't really involve Canada at all. However, King heard about how the Nazis were rounding up Jews and putting them into concentration camps. Jewish refugees wanted to enter Canada, but because of the Depression, Canada didn't accept the refugees, and they were sent back to Nazi Germany and put into concentration camps. December 1, 1939, Hitler invaded Poland, which dragged France and Great Britain into the war as well. King called for a parliament and decided Canada's response to the war. Some Canadians were still scarred from the First World War that happened not more than 25 years ago, but many still felt tied to the British, especially after King George VI and Queen Elizabeth II visited Canada in May of 1939. King was dreading another war. The country had just started to recover from the Depression. He didn't want Canada to be plunged back into debt. Canadian citizens, however, were offered a large sum of money for joining the army and supporting the war. Due to the Depression, people were desperate to earn money, so the army grew in size. The decision was made by the end of 1939, and Canada joined the Second World War alongside the Allied powers. Yeah, so that sums up the main events that happened in Canada in the 1920s and 1930s. Yeah, that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed our presentation.